Spoilers. 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 Like that? Like that? Yeah. Or, or in... It doesn't matter. Like that? And then you fold it... Like that. Welcome to In The Fold, our movie review show <laughs> where we barely fold laundry. I'm Mike. I'm Echo. And today we're reviewing... Roar. 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 Storm has come and gone, and while the road was long, the How to describe the gem that is Roar? Roar is a charming, heartwarming family adventure film. This is a madhouse. No, it is. It's just like life. You get the funny with the tragic. About a deranged madman who lures his innocent family into a nightmare of mortal terror. Middle America, you don't get Roar, you know? Middle America, honestly, would get Roar. They would get Roar very well. There's more There's more captive tigers That's true. in Texas than there are right. in the wild. That's right. They looked at Noel Marshall and were like, yeah, man. Yeah. Own a house with 150 lions. This movie is credited as being one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous, in history. 70 people were mauled in the production of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Noel Marshall, the producer, director, star, uh, gets his hand bitten in the first act of the movie and has to bandage it up. He got gangrene from it. Mm -hmm. Tippi Hedren broke her arm falling from an elephant. Melanie Griffith needed plastic surgery because she was mauled by a lion. The and cinematographer almost had his head ripped off. He needed about 220 stitches. Um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. It's a terrible film that tries its hardest. Yeah. It is a movie that really has no redeeming value except for the fact that everyone involved, on screen and off, is in immediate mortal danger. John. Are you scaring him? You know, you gotta watch out for Mark. No, he's okay. This is Charlie. Wow. And you gotta watch out for Beery, okay? Which is the best part about the movie. Like, yeah. The movie doesn't do a good job of setting up tension in its editing or even through its music. Like, the music yeah. choices are terrible. Mm -hmm. But knowing the fact that 70 people were mauled in the making of it and that the lions could, could just go off and that some of the maulings show up in the film on camera, it gives you a very palpable sense of terror for all of the people in the movie. The movie is... Uh, written and directed and produced and basically built together whole cloth by uh, uh, Noel Marshall. Oh. The husband of actress Tippi Hedren, who was in The Birds. Are you okay? Mom, you look crazy. Uh, so this poor woman, really only known for about two things, being uh, attacked by birds and Hitchcock and being attacked by lions and Noel Marshall, her husband. He's crazy. He was crazy. Who is going to be our main character? He is a doctor? Yeah, or at least he's just a guy in a coat. He's just a white guy in a coat uh, feeling up the Maasai. <laughs> Who's studying lions. Uh, his family is coming from America, I guess. Chicago, To yeah. visit him. The family includes uh, their daughter, Melanie Griffith, uh, a man who looks suspiciously like Bob Ross, and a guy whose overbite surpasses his nose. They can try and get their family back together because he left because they had some sort of falling out. You know that your father and I were having problems and we thought it would be better to be apart for a while. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, there's nothing really explained. I just assume he just started banging lions. Or Mativo. Or Mativo, yeah. Mativo is Marshall's like hapless assistant, buddy, potential mate. Guy who shows up to his house and has no other way of escaping. Yeah, he's just this poor guy who's just been, who's just trapped with a madman. Hey, hello to Henry the Jaguar, would you? Not today. His job is just to simultaneously be us, the audience, and be this guy's longtime companion. Which doesn't make any sense because this work, guy yeah. is from Africa. Yeah. And like, why is this white guy trying to tell this guy who's like lived in Africa his whole life, like, about lions? Where I come from, I'm an African. Uh, we don't, we don't come close to animals. You don't cuddle them, to kiss them, to go to bed with them, and we don't do that. The way that Marshall treats Mativo 
is a very white man's burden kind of scenario going on there where he's going to take it upon himself to teach the locals how to behave and he's going to educate them. It is such a perfect metaphor for the arrogance and ignorance and stupidity of white Westerners invading the land and people of Africa. No, if you just look at them, or you run at them. No, no look. What? Uh, you leave him alone. So e even before the family shows up, there's uh, a scene where a bunch of people on a boat show up. Here comes trouble. To uh, Marshall's secluded estate. I, we're not sure what they're doing there, what their purpose is. But they're just coming to check it out, I think, to see yeah, what it's, it's all about. Yeah, what is he doing there? They're probably on a cruise line or something. So on these boats are Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. Uh, meathead from All in the Family. Mr. Stivic, you are a meathead. <laughs> and two uh, rare animal hunters who are very it's laughably convenient. poorly yeah. dubbed. Let the zoos keep them alive. These two hunters are established as the antagonists of the film. But the real antagonist is Marshall himself. Yes. When they get there, no Marshall has to leave them because... Uh, Togar, the outsider lion, shows up and starts harassing all of the other lions. So he has to go and break up a fight, which leaves all of these people alone in their boats to get mauled. Marshall literally just runs into a pack of uh, brawling lions, screaming. His hair is akimbo. He's just shaking himself. He's kind of like sidling the fight, trying to, trying to hop his way in there. And it's at this point where you have to remember... This guy is a doctor. <laughs> and Meathead just kind of sits there like an asshole and just watches this tiger crawl onto this boat. And he's like, kind of scared. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Echo, what would you do if a tiger jumped into your boat? <sighs> I mean, I guess I really wouldn't have behaved much differently, I admit. But like... Especially if I was on a film, you know? I like, if I was I an actor be... and I was like, oh, this tiger jumps in my boat. I, uh, nobody told me that I should leave the boat. <laughs> A few minutes later, he ends up out of the boat and in the water, and he's got his face is all torn to pieces. He's got heavy lacerations, very real blood. And then Marshall's yelling at him, Oh, well, where are you going? It's just he's, a scratch. Yeah, just a, <laughs> this is my third face. Where are you, you fucking pussy? Oh, what the hell's wrong with you? All oh, you got's a few scratches. <laughs> well, let's talk about the, the lions for a minute. Now, some of the lions actually get their own cast in screen credit, you know, they show them in the beginning, even though, except for one, you really can't tell any of them apart. God, Togar, why the day of all day? It took so long to make because they had to become a part of the pride of the lions. They had to bring the lions into their yeah. homes. It's not your normal pre-production phase. No. You have to literally ingratiate yourself, ingratiate yourself into a culture of, of animals. However, as soon as the, the trainers for these Hollywood acting animals heard that we were going to have maybe 25 or 30 big cats working together, they, they laughed at us and said, this can't be done. This is, you know, this, because of instinctual dictates to fight. So throughout the whole movie, randomly, just lions just break out into fighting. And some of them have awesome kick-ass lion-style names like Togar. And then other ones are named Gary. Charlie, Johnny, Robbie. Yeah. And Marshall kind of comes up with the, whenever there's a fight, they, he comes up with these explanations for why they're fighting. And it's like, you can t it's like, this is a guy who's clearly just lost his mind. He spent way too much time in the brush with these lions, and he, his brain is coming apart. While it sounds ridiculous, it makes a, a little bit of sense. I know, yeah. And, it's, and that is the part where I feel like they wanted to tell you about lions and try to get you to like lions. But you're listening to this guy who already you just ha has zero credibility because yeah. he's gotten his hand uh, like bitten through. He's in the middle of saying that these, the, these lions are gentle creatures and they need to be protected and he's in the middle of being mauled by a tiger when it happens. Um, so we're, the synopsis. We still have the synopsis. Are we still have the synopsis? Because the movies we do on the show you can't describe that succinctly. So the, the family's coming to Africa but uh, they sort of have this uh, dilemma where they miss each other. Noel Marshall tries to take a boat to see his family. Uh -huh. He invites a couple tigers along with him in, for the journey, along with Mativo. Why not? 
And uh, just like in the, the, the first scene with the tigers jumping into a boat, they eventually sink the boat. So now you got no Marshall, two tigers, and Mativo that are trying to get to the airport to pick up his family who have already hitched a bus back to his house. So they, they both miss each other, and the family gets to the house and doesn't know what to do with all these lions, and Noel Marshall has to make his way back to the house to save his family. When they arrive, the house is very suspiciously quiet, as though all the lions and the tigers and all the cats have decided to just play like a big prank. Hank? Dad? We're here! Uh, and the rest of the movie plays out like this kind of nightmare scenario where this family is is trapped in this house in the dumbest of ways doing the dumbest of things um but with very real mortal terror because these you know there's 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 no trickery there's no cgi there's no nothing this is literally just an absolute shitload of dangerous wildcats uh ready to tear apart this family of idiots Marshall and Mativo happen upon a village that just happens to have a couple of bicycles. They they have they they use the tigers to scare away the villagers, right? Am I misremembering this? Yeah. It just looks like No Marshall shows up with the two tigers, and the whole village runs away terrified. And then bikes. they just steal the bikes. And these are probably the only things that this this village actually has. I mean, it doesn't really seem like they have water. They don't destroy the bicycles. What Noel else? Marshall just runs into Mativo and destroys his bicycle. Yeah. Mativo runs up a tree. Then he's, then Noel Marshall says to him, well, we can't go anywhere because the tigers are going to follow me if I, if, I try to, if I try to leave. So why don't you dangle yourself from the tree and try to get the tiger's attention to play with you? Mm, not today. The way the way that Marshall treats Mativo is seriously uh, uh, upsetting, and Mativo just gets the short end of the stick every single time. Uh, he loses his jacket. Not my jacket. Not my jacket. That's my jacket. Leave that alone. That's my jacket. He makes him distract his tigers while he can run away twice. He's not. He's not good to Mativo at all. No, it's very upsetting, the way he treats Mativo. This is supposed to be his closest confidant, assumably. He finally gets to the airport and realizes that his family is not there. So then he borrows this guy named Leonard's car, which could just be a made-up name that he gave this person. We don't really know. He comes back to Mativo, and then he doesn't even give Mativo a seat in the car. He gives the, the Tigers the back seat. It makes yeah. Mativo ride in the trunk. Yeah. The tigers right. destroy the boat, they destroy the bicycles, and they destroy the car. Mm -hmm. uh, poor Leonard. So now they have to walk the rest of the way, and he gives Mativo an umbrella to fend off the tigers. <laughs> Just fend them this. off. Put it like that. So while all that's going on, the family is just in various degrees of uh, trouble at the at the Marshall homestead. There's a lot of great situations that they get into using a lot of things that are in the house, but every time they always get stopped by either lions or elephants or just their own stupidity. I had the barrel full of water. I go, she scares. I see she's hiding there, and then I have, I'm stuck, so I get in this barrel full of water. Just to even get the lions to drink the water, you, and you have to, they're not going to drink on cue. So what would happen is we would uh, have to leave them up on this hot roof for like three hours. Before we'd film, you give them salted meat to make them really thirsty. Yeah, uh, you trapped in the refrigerator, in, in lockers. In barrels. Barrels, yes. <laughs> There's even, like any good movie, like any mo movie worth its admission, there is a section of the film dedicated specifically to sweet bike stunts. Sweet bike stunts. Yeah! Eventually they find a motorbike and they literally drive it into and around and on top of the house. Yeah, there's perfectly placed ramps all around this house yeah. that allows him to go from the bottom floor all the way up to the roof <laughs> with this motorbike. I love any movie that has convenient ramps. The thing about lions is that <laughs> if you try to run away from a lion, they're going to run after they you are. because it's instinctual. Yeah. 
So if you get on a motorbike, they're gonna run after that. If you get in a boat, they're gonna run after that. If you just run away, they're gonna run after you. Especially if you paddle as inefficiently as you possibly could. I'm not even paddling, just... <laughs> it's like, th that's the funny, the funny thing about this movie is that if it actually were shot, competently and performed competently it would actually take away from the tension yeah because if it because if it was if it was well produced there would be all this opportunity to accuse it of fakery and phoniness but the fact that they're acting so stupidly it allows the tension ironically to ramp up at one point one of them manages in the middle of all this ruckus uh to take a nap right it's uh, tippy yep and i think a honey pours on her which is a total missed opportunity. It's really great, but it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you think like, oh boy, this is gonna be the part where she literally gets eaten. But no, she, they just lick her face a little bit. Yeah, very disappointing. Lame. Uh, she does lose her shirt at one point. Yeah, she does. So. But then she breaks her arm, so she has to wear this ugly red sweatshirt for the rest yeah, of the movie. Yeah, she brought herself a nice thick Christmas sweater, um, you know, which is something you're gonna need in Sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> The elephants in this movie are the angriest elephants I have ever seen in they my life. They don't fuck around. This movie is insane. The yeah. insanity level in this movie cannot be overstated. Yeah. This man is running around all the time, bloody, sweaty, screaming. Often pantsless. Uh, he's making light of everybody's injuries. Mm-hmm. Oh, what the hell's wrong with you? All you got's a few scratches. <laughs> and these lions are trying to kill people. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I love about this movie is how far it will go to paint the animals as the, this constant swarm of terror and death and simultaneously espouse the message that they are these gentle, loving creatures that need to be saved at all costs. His whole mission is to show people how nice and sweet and gentle these cats can be. Which, granted, does come up at some point in the movie. Yeah. There's a couple nice little lulls where you get some footage of, like, lions playing with, like, a skateboard and, like, a motorcycle helmet. That lion, given enough time, would have figured out how to board. No doubt about it. Well, there's enough ramps at the house. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> uh, um, let's talk about, because it takes the movie so long to come back to the hunter subplot. Well, they have like a committee meeting. All of the, yeah. all of the people who... What, what committee? What is it? All of the people who showed up on the boats, they have this like committee meeting, and they lined up all the animals like in a row to make them all look nice in the shot. <laughs> And they have this scene where they, the two main antagonists decide that they're just going to go and shoot all the lions because they don't like them. I guess because they got mauled by them and they're out for revenge. Uh, it's about nighttime now, and the hunters are gathering nearby somewhere where they're just pumping shells into a shotgun and they're talking, you know, we're going to take them out. We shouldn't load anything smaller than a 30 or 6 for lions. So they grab a couple horses and uh, they make their way over to an old marshal's place to go and, and shoot up some lions, but they don't make it all the way there because Togar, our antagonist lion, our outsider lion, ends up uh, murdering. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty rewarding, you know, because... It, they're the only murders, the only people to die in the whole movie, and it's pretty satisfying. Yeah, and pretty, pretty impressively gruesome. So basically, what we have, uh, so that subplot is wrapped up. The family has like ran away from the house. They found like a shack nearby. There's a shack <laughs> that hasn't been established. It's it's six feet away from the fucking house. And they go to sleep <laughs> there, but then they don't lock the fence. So then during the night, all of the yeah. lions just walk in and start to sleep <laughs> with them. And they wake up in the morning, and because they're not dead yet, they they figure that the lions are nice because. If they wanted to get us, they would have done it while we were asleep. Come on. The music is nice. Yes, the music is nice, so obviously the so lines are it's okay. okay. Yeah. The tone of the film is dictated largely by the music. 
I mean, most of the scenes are just people getting mauled by tigers. But if the music that is playing is sappy, it's supposed to be heartwarming. But if it's tense, it's supposed to be scary. They're, it's the same scenes, but they just change the music. And then that's just how your, your emotions are dictated. So that's pretty funny to me. The overwhelming majority of the music seems to be some ripoff of the Nutcracker Suite. Uh, the movie is bookended by two unironically awesome fucking songs uh, that are totally fucking catchy. And if I didn't know otherwise, I would assume they were just written by Toto. In certain moments where they just cut the music out completely, which allows you to hear all of their editing mistakes and all of the terrible audio and dialogue. Uh, it's tough. The family, in, in addition to being on camera, had to share a lot of the production duties. For example, the son, John, whenever he's not on camera at getting his face mauled off, he's just off camera holding the boom mic. And uh, boy, does it show, because a, the overwhelming majority of the dialogue in this film is completely inaudible. Listen, don't say anything about Prentice, okay? I thought you was getting that hands. I don't want you to say anything about that either. Don't spoil it with you, and I'll tell him later. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Marshall shows up conveniently. Uh, not what, What's the opposite of the nick of time? It's conveniently after everything is done. <laughs> to yeah. not have been a help whatsoever. To have been the instigator of a great deal of carnage and violence and peril. And two people's deaths. And the death of two people. Which I wonder if he'll ever face the consequences for that. Mm, not today. The movie's original budget was $4 million, but through acts of God, crew members getting mauled, falling off scaffolding, and all these other random things, the budget eventually ballooned to be $17 million. Which, in 1980, is a huge chunk of change. For especially an indie, an indie project, it's yeah. basically a passion project by Noel Marshall and his family. But this was the era, too, of movies uh, being led by auteurs and their and their budgets ballooning wildly out of control, you know, Apocalypse Now, uh, Heaven's Gate, you know, this was the era for that, mm -hmm. you know. And you could just do that. You could just be a psychopath and walk into a movie studio and be, hey, I got a fucking shitballs idea, and you're just going to give me millions of dollars to do it. The reason the movie was made in the first place was because Tippi Hedren and Noel Marshall really liked lions. It was always so beautiful to, to, to go to the game preserves when I had time off and see the animals running free and working with each other and against each other, just doing you know, what they do to make a living. They saw this, this house with, that was full of lions that were just living free and li together and they wanted to put it on film and to teach people that lions aren't that bad and we should respect them and we should show disgust for people who wear animal furs. The message of the film is already pretty heavy-handed. Yeah. Uh, but Marshall takes an opportunity in the beginning credits and in the end credits to send a very snotty message about uh, how you should show your shame and disgust for people that wear fur, and it's a very pro-animal message, which is fine, and, I, and I, I sympathize with it completely. But they're just real fucking snotty about it. They, they want you to go out and protest in front of stores that yeah. sell the, furs. The credits have a things you could do list, which, uh, fuck yourself. Sorry. <laughs> this movie would never be made nowadays. No. Inside of this pretty stupid movie is a really fascinating documentary about a family living amongst lions and the deranged madman that is just the ringmaster of this nonsense. There's actually a wealth of behind-the-scenes footage where they show the Marshall family just fraternizing with the lions. It was uh, amazing to have grown up with and lived through. It probably gave them insights to all kinds of things that don't usually happen to young people. And that seems to, to be what they wanted to communicate. Yeah. But they went with this narrative uh, that bafflingly, confoundingly contradicts what they were trying to communicate. And there were very few people that made it all the way through the film. The movie takes place in Africa, but for the majority of the movie was actually shot in Southern California. At Marshall's Ranch. At Marshall's Ranch. Uh, but they do have a lot of great like B-roll footage. Like they spent like I think a couple days in Africa just shooting like giraffes running and a lot of really cool animals. So there is some great shots of like wildlife in this movie. The cinematographer on this was... Is Jan de Bont. He shot Die Hard, uh, The Hunt for Red October, Black Rain, um, Lethal Weapon 3. So these are all movies I'm intimately Speed, familiar with. Speed, right? Uh, he directed Speed, actually. He directed and, Speed. Directed Speed and Twister. And Twister. And Twister. Great. So this guy 
really knows his way around kinetic action. It lists him in the credits as like a camera operator, so I'm pretty sure the actual, the real DP that showed up for the first day was Eaton, and he just worked his way up. Yeah, I think you're right. Ironically, after 12 years of making this, this film through suffering through lions and maulings and all this hardship, and the fact that the movie is about a family coming together, a year later, Tippy and Noel divorced. Yeah. So sad. Tippy. You Tippy had a, gets you, it rough. Yeah, you had a rough ride, ma'am. And I just, you have my sincere sympathies. Birds and lions and Hitchcock and Marshall. Fucking rough run. My heart goes out to you. And now you have to suffer this review. Yeah. For a while. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, each and every scene has something to talk about. Uh, so we did, we did not uh, do this movie enough justice. <laughs> no. <laughs> you could talk about this movie for literally hours. You, yeah. can, you can theorize about why they did it, why it was made, what they were thinking. Just a fascinating watch. Yeah. I would recommend this movie to everyone. I don't think you can not like this movie. It's got lions. It's got a great backstory. And I think that it's just a movie that's so insane that it'll keep you entertained for every single scene. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, it is, after all, a family adventure film. So I recommend this movie for all ages. Uh, it's got something for everyone. It's got, it's got action. It's got excitement. It's got cuteness with the animals. Um, tension. Danger. Real danger. Like the kind of danger that you don't really see in most movies. Uh, and insanity. I can't recommend it enough especially for young children. In the fire and the sun in the morning In the full in the sky See the eagle in the sun in the sky Oh, <coughs> Thank you.